looked out and the barn was gone. Just an amazing uh, display of lightning. Just the sound of the thunder as well. You could really tell that it was a big collision in air masses that was taking place. A situation where I've declared a state of emergency, that means that people should stay in their homes, should watch television, listen to their uh, radio, do whatever they have to do until we can give them a better update. Stay indoors. 80,000 people without power this morning. NIMO is working to get that power back on, but they tell us it may be as much as a week before some people have juice back on in their homes and apartments. It doesn't appear that uh, the fair will have uh, its 12th day on Labor Day. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Kathy Orr. Behind me, I have the Labor Day storm Doppler radar. We started off at 9 p.m. on Sunday, and you can see the explosions of storms early Labor Day morning. The storms came across the lake, a series of severe thunderstorms, and they form what we call a bow echo. You can see the bright reds and oranges. This storm was devastating throughout central New York. It had the strength of a moderate to severe tornado, but it was determined by the National Weather Service office on Monday as they surveyed the damage that it was from straight line thunderstorm winds. As these thunderstorms crossed the region over the Onondaga County region and most of central New York, there were downbursts of air, straight line winds, most of the destruction in a west east orientation and that's why it was determined a derecho the spanish word for straight this storm started in niagara county exploded across the new york state region and ended off cape and massachusetts by 6 a.m labor day morning devastating indeed and something we will not soon forget throughout the central new york region we can also call it another storm of the century now back to ron and maureen thank you kathy well certainly by the early morning light it was clear this was no ordinary summer thunderstorm. No, only from the air could one grasp the full scope of this disaster. Our Chopper 5 camera provided pictures we often associate with the aftermath of hurricanes in the south and tornadoes in the Midwest. But these wrecked buildings and toppled trees were in our own community. From places like Port Byron and Syracuse's southwest side to the state fair. And the fair was poised to set an attendance record thanks to great weather for 11 days. But as our Matt Mulcahy reports, the Labor Day storms brought an end to the fair and to two lives. A wind-snapped tree crushed what had been the place Beryl Stone lived during his visit to the fair. Now it's the place where he died. He was sleeping when the storm cut through. The 75 mile an hour winds collapsed tents and blew the roof off the dairy building, collapsing the tent and killing John Perry where he had been sleeping. We ain't going to die. I said, no, no, I said, just start praying. And I'm holding out of the door going. Hundreds of evacuated fair campers survived the violent force of the winds and rain by holding on to each other for dear life. We're hanging out of the sides of our camp. And thank God we're between two big ones because we would have probably run over ourselves. As you all know, a tornado touched down at the New York State Fairgrounds. What fair director Peter Campasilli called a tornado turned out to be straight line winds. But the language doesn't really matter to the victims who endure the fright and pain of the destruction. It doesn't matter how much you do. Um, when God decides that um, there's going to be a natural disaster, it's in his hands. And we're very thankful that um, it was just two casualties because if it ever happened during the day, who knows how many. If the storm had hit with the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder record crowds we've seen all week, it could have been much worse. But instead, the tornado made its mark at 1.20 in the morning on Labor Day 1998. Now, if you still hold advance sale tickets for the fair, you can mail them to the fair and get complimentary tickets for next year. Incidentally, the Labor Day race and demolition derby have been rescheduled for October 4th. Now, the university area of the city was another hard-hit neighborhood. The university's South Campus housing took a big hit. Roofs were ripped off on some student apartments. Hundreds of students were evacuated, and structural damage was reported in 10 buildings on campus. And the storm made life in one of the city's more economically disadvantaged neighborhoods even tougher. And as Donna Spezielli tells us, the storm also damaged a center of the community's life. 
Sometimes God works in strange ways, not even a church immune from the storm's destruction. St. Lucie's steeple ripped right to the ground. Things that should have been strong weakened by Mother Nature's grip. Peter Starmer is visiting his daughter and granddaughter. This is his car. Oh, I already reported to the insurance people, and they've been working all night. And we won't mention names. Uh, <laughs> and anyway, they've been, they've been getting calls from Syracuse all night, they say. And so there's going to be a long lineup for new windshields and new uh, uh, glass. So I don't know how long it will be. How long will it take to right buildings or to get things that once stood tall back to normal again? And business could have been booming in a lot of places. Here at the Sears Hardware Store in Westvale Plaza, they were letting in people one by one for fear of looting. Well, they can bring out the worst in people. Disasters have a way of bringing out the best, too. I'm, I've been here for seven years. People are like more than friends and uh, customers. I'm just here to see if they need any help, any, any candles, berries. On this Labor Day, we labored in ways we never imagined. But you won't find many people who complain about the lack of a holiday. That's all I can say. And, we, and most of us still alive, so we can go on with our lives. I'm going to just pray for those who didn't make it. Donna Spizielli, News 5. Now, Syracuse wasn't the only place hit hard by the Labor Day storm. Virtually everywhere you looked in the suburbs and neighboring counties, more downed power lines and trees and tales of survival. We'll have that as well as the latest on efforts to restore power. It was unlike anything we've seen in central New York, and our neighbors were hit hard by the storm's turbulent winds. I'm meteorologist Kathy Orr. Many of our friends and family were helped recently by the Red Cross, and now we can help them. Labor Day Storm 98, a video history, was shot by News 5's award-winning photojournalist. This tape includes video you won't see anywhere else. For your copy of Labor Day Storm 98, a video history, send a check or money order for $14.95 to this address or call 425-5555. The destruction from the Labor Day storm cut a line from west to east. One of the areas our News 5 cameras reached was the Auburn area. That's where we found lots of damage along Route 5 just outside that city. This was the scene at the BJ's Wholesale Club store. Getting around in Cayuga County was as tough as it was anywhere else. Our Brenda Tyler found a Cayuga County community struggling with a big loss. The Federated Baptist Church was straight in line with the storm. Now its steeple lays in what once was the center of worship. This church was a piece of history. Parishioners gathered here since the mid-1800s. For Walt Schoonmaker, it was much, much more. His great-great-grandfather built this church back in 1844. Built many of the things, uh, buildings around here, and this was one of them, I'm sure. When he built it, he was probably... Uh, Kind of a matter of pride for him because uh, it's kind of a piece of artwork. But the artwork is now shattered, like much of this community. The destruction stretches across the town. The focus now, though, is to recover. Crews are working overtime. Utility trucks line village streets. People who don't have power are getting inventive. Rich Stevens is using a mobile home to run electricity to two houses. How is it working? Great. Got the refrigerator on, uh, local news, uh, the basic necessities until they get the power back up. As fast as they can pick up the debris, workers are getting rid of it. For many people, the road to recovery will take weeks and weeks. They're dealing with things like this. Snap trees just laying in their front lawns. And check out over here. There is so much debris, you'd hardly be able to tell there's a house under there. Paul Simkin is assessing the damage for the American Red Cross disaster relief. He's knocking on doors and making sure everyone is okay. The miracle here, no one was hurt. The sign in front of the church puts it best. This is just the building. The people who worship here are the church. In Port Byron, Brenda Tyler, News 5. Niagara Mohawk has had more than 800 crews, its employees, and crews from across the Northeast here to restore power. 
Crews from Canada, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut came to help. Niagara Mohawk says that while the January ice storm that hit the North Country knocked out power to 140,000 businesses and homes, at its height, 250,000 customers here in central New York were without power during the Labor Day storm. It took nearly six weeks to get everyone back online and the ice storm, largely because it was spread out over a huge area, and NIMO had to rebuild nearly its entire system. Here in just one week, almost everyone has power back. NIMO says the few customers still without power are generally those with extensive damage that requires additional work or the work of a private electrical contractor. News 5 meteorologist Bob Van Dillen brought us first word of the impending storm, and meteorologist Tom Hoff was first on the air with news of its impact. We'll hear from them in a moment. And long lines form as Central New Yorkers try to get emergency help to replace food lost by power outages. News 5 meteorologists were on top of this story from the beginning. Bob Van Dillen reported at 11 we were in for a wild night. And Tom Hoff was the first on the air in central New York with an eyewitness account. And Tom, it was a wild night outside and in the newsroom listening to reports on the police scanner, wasn't it? That it was, Maureen. It's just an amazing night overall. You know, one of the things that we learn in meteorology school is that most of your severe weather occurs during the hottest part of the day, during the afternoon. Well, that certainly wasn't the case with the storm moving in between 1 and 1.30. Very similar to the big storm that affected the Adirondacks back in July of 1995. And another similarity between the two storms, and this is a very good point to look at for the future, most of the time cold fronts move from west to east, but this particular front, like the one in July of 95, came in from more of a northerly direction. We refer to those as backdoor cold fronts. So if there's any lessons learned, beware of the backdoor cold front. The other amazing thing about the storm was the actual speed that it moved across the state at about 50 miles per hour. Just an amazing, amazing story. Probably something that we won't see again in our lifetimes, at least we hope so anyway. Now, as uh, dawn broke on Labor Day morning, the common thought was that we had been hit by tornadoes, but that was not the case. In fact, we were hit by straight line winds. Now, meteorologist Bob Van Dillen with more on that. Last night, the unofficial summer ended just as it began, with tornado warnings posted for central New York. Once the sun came up, the picture became clear. Something roared through the area with so much power, it ripped up 100-year-old trees and knocked out power for hundreds of thousands. But was it really a tornado? The Binghamton National Weather Service says no, not at least in Onondaga County. Steve Cool of the National Weather Service was surveying the damage at the state fairgrounds today, and he believes the heaviest damage was done by straight-line winds from severe thunderstorms. Since we had straight-line winds of over 100 miles per hour here last night, it really didn't take a tornado to topple a tree of this size. Check it out, it really changes the landscape around here. Straight-line winds, or derechos, form from an air mass at the very top of the thunderstorm. The air mass cools so quickly and becomes so heavy that the cloud's updraft can't hold it anymore and it comes crashing down as a downdraft with great speed. Once the downdraft hits the ground, it rushes out at the surface at speeds as fast as 115 miles per hour, the strength of a hurricane or a weak tornado. Meteorologist Bob Van Dillen, News 5. Well, for many people faced with the prospect of a lengthy power outage, the scramble for alternatives to Niagara Mohawk was on. Generators were a hot commodity at any store that managed to open its doors. For many, the generators were not just a convenience to keep the lights on, but a necessity to keep sump pumps running and basements dry. For others, there was another scramble on, one for aid to help replace food spoiled by the power outage. And Donna Adamo explains. A vicious storm made its path across central New York early Monday morning. Four days later, a new path is formed, this one in front of the War Memorial in downtown Syracuse, where thousands of people are waiting for help. And while patience may be a virtue, Dan Mattis's is growing thin. And they're going to, I guess they're giving you $3 a day for how long? I don't, you know, and you wait and you wait and you wait. And processing each application takes time. And then they'll give you we have 
have 31,000 food stamp recipients in Onondaga County. The benefits were just issued in early September. Many made purchases from those benefits, and they lost, uh, lost their food because of the storm. More than 2,000 people have already been given replacement food stamps or food vouchers. Officials say the lines will continue. And you'll be here today till what time? Until the, until the last person leaves. In Syracuse, Donna Adamo, News 5. And when we come back, the National Guard invades. But these citizen soldiers are armed with chainsaws instead of assault rifles. Their story when we return. Fortunately, Central New Yorkers were never alone trying to triumph over this tragedy. Utility crews from across the region and Canada came to help. And National Guard troops from across the state showed up to assist, and our Matt Mulcahy caught up with them when they arrived. The Guard members mustered at DeWitt headquarters, arriving from all across the state. 200 soldiers dressed in battle fatigues and armed with chainsaws, a ready-to-work labor force just taking care of uh, the down trees and initially getting organized and get broke down to the teams and then just going out there and work. Let's go! Acting on orders, these civilians turned soldiers step aside from their professional lives to help put the community back on its feet. The troops say the Army is all about hurry up and wait. Once the convoy hits the road, there's time to reflect on the family they've left behind. My wife is pregnant, and I didn't really want to leave. When I left my house, my wife looked at me and said, she's really proud of what I'm doing, and it's really great that I have a chance to go help you. I'm sitting down. The people desperately need the tools and the man hours to get out from under the weight of nature's force. It started raining where these National Guard members are working right now, but the bad weather is no hindrance to them. You see, a lot of these National Guardsmen were part of the North Country ice storm recovery, where temperatures hovered around zero degrees. The work will go on for days from sunup to sundown. For people enduring the storm, the that help off. arrived well, just in have... time. Thank God they're here. If they weren't here, I don't know what we'd do. With the sun shining, you couldn't tell there was a blackout when Christine Pompano and her family met Governor Pataki as he looked at storm damage near her home. You can grab the iron board. <laughs> but just a few hours later, the effects of the power outage were clear as she and her husband Mike returned to a dark house after doing laundry at her grandfather's. Tasks like laundry have only been made harder. Like many, Christine is hoping for a quick end. Clothes, I got them all hanging up now. I got enough for three days. <laughs> enough to finish out the week anyway. The Papanos, like thousands of others, lit candles. Just the best we can. The family is getting a little extra help from 10-year-old Lakota's flashlight and a work light Christine's husband has rigged to a battery. I had it laying around, so I figured I might as well use it for something. You can put it on the car for that and not work on a car at night. More than 100,000 people are still without power. The Papanos say they don't expect to have power for another week and say they're planning ahead. Same thing as always. Just finish cooking up the food. Start making sure uh, these guys got ready and something to do in the morning. Go get up and go to work. For News 5, Mike Sigler. Central New York businesses were either booming or struggling because of the storm. And our Brenda Tyler caught up with people who haven't stopped working since the storm hit. Cash registers at Denny's are ringing up sale after sale. People are packing the restaurant, dishing out big bucks, in turn for a warm, hot meal. Michael Francis's family came to the restaurant for breakfast. They have no food and no power. Can't cook, we gotta eat. <laughs> Kids are hungry, you know, and you know, some of the things you keep like milk and stuff like that, can't keep it around, so, you know, and they gotta eat. It's chaotic in the kitchen. Employees are working 16-hour days just to feed the hungry crowds. By 10.30 in the morning, they also filled more than 300 takeout orders. 
Manager Rick Martinez says he's averaging about four hours of sleep. As far as financially and business-wise, we are doing very good. This is probably the busiest week we've had um, in probably years, a couple years at least. Hotels are booked solid, too. Guests are passing the time playing ping pong, watching Mark McGuire highlights, or reading the newspaper. Hotel managers say the rooms are so booked up, they're having to send business travelers as far north as Watertown to find a place to stay. Megan Hunter is the manager of Mike Rotel Inn. We were swamped with the business from the state fair, so that kept us busy, 100% occupancy. And then we took a breath, and then this hit, so we're swamped again, which is good for business. We're not complaining. Maybe not, but some people who can't cook in their own homes are complaining. After all, you can only eat out so many times before you break your wallet. Well, we are out of time for this broadcast. We are offering a videotape of this program that contains a lot more of the highlights of our coverage of the Labor Day storm. Now, you can purchase the tape for $14.95 by sending a check or money order to Storm Video, WTVH, 980 James Street, Syracuse, 13203. Part of the proceeds will benefit the American Red Cross. And we leave you now with some of the triumphs over the tragedy of the Labor Day storm. Good night, everybody. God wanted my son and I to live, but he doesn't want me to live here.